Hello, and welcome back to InterSystems Virtual Summit 2021. TrackCare is InterSystems' unified healthcare information platform built for a changing healthcare world. I'm Dimitri Fain. I lead our global TrackCare product team, and it's my honor to be here with you today to talk about how we're enhancing and improving TrackCare to support this ever-evolving world. If you've ever studied biological evolution, you know that it's not a smooth and steady process. The fossil record shows this clearly. In evolutionary biology, this is called punctuated equilibrium. Species exist in stasis for long periods of time, followed by relatively short punctuations, which are often triggered by environmental change and lead to the creation of new species. Complex systems like digital healthcare also evolve. Of course, the pace is a lot faster than biological evolution, but in my experience anyway, similar principles apply, and I believe we're in the middle of a punctuation event right now. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced our systems to change at a pace that's really been unheard of. Our customers and our product have evolved rapidly to meet the new environmental pressures. And from a track care uh, point of view, this experience has really highlighted the value of one of our core beliefs, that a unified health platform must be built for a changing world. So let me explain uh, a little bit more. If you run a healthcare organization, the environment in which you operate is constantly changing, even before COVID-19. So consider this chart that attempts to map out the relative importance to an organization of a number of key pressure points. This sort of modeling is useful in evaluating an evolving strategy. You can decide where to invest and establish KPIs that meet your targets. But the pressure on your business is constantly evolving and you need to make adjustments. Every quarter, every year, things change, and new changes, whether from the regulatory environment, changing business requirements, changes in healthcare and science, or indeed a global pandemic. And your digital systems need to be able to evolve right along with you. This is why we introduced a continuous release process where we're able to share product updates every six weeks instead of once a year. The world's changing faster than ever before, and we need to be able to react faster and change how we think about the delivery of enterprise software systems. So from a roadmap strategy point of view, we think about these three pillars of agility and resilience as key guiding principles. Interoperability to drive data flow. Healthy data is critical here. Our customers spend a lot of time and money implementing track care and its ability to manage healthy data and to make it available via interoperability is key to the value proposition. User experience to drive adoption and support clinical process. So we're passionate about user experience in general, but especially because a better experience leads to deeper adoption, which in turn drives both satisfaction and clinical and business outcomes. And finally, enabling innovation. This is about building a platform that we can use to innovate, but it's also, and maybe more important, enabling you to innovate as an organization. This innovation can involve rapid adjustments to business process, but it's also the ability to use the data you're collecting in new and innovative ways. On that last topic, I'm pleased to announce something new, the TrackCare Innovation Toolkit. We talk a lot about the value of data and also about innovation, but actually taking the next step to use that data in new and innovative ways has been a challenge in the past, and it's often required professional services from InterSystems or our partners. The Innovation Toolkit rem removes many of these barriers and enables our customers to access all of their data via the InterSystems Iris for Health Fire Repository. This is meant to be something a technical person at a client site can deploy themselves very quickly. The installation is largely automated, and within a few minutes, you can be up and running and able to start working with Smart on Fire apps and work with the Fire Repository generally to view your data in new and creative ways. We see this as a platform moving forward and we plan to enhance it to make it easier to unlock the value of your data. It's based on the Iris Community Edition, which is free for development use. So you can get started right away without having to buy anything. So when thinking about innovation, you often need to try a lot of uh, different ideas to find the small number that make a substantial difference. Some innovation models assume one success out of every 10 ideas or out of every 100. So we're trying to remove the barriers and cost and make it easier for you to get started and just try out these ideas. Our initial focus is on unlocking your data rather than writing data back into track care. This is about ways in which to leverage the data you have. There's of course a lot of different options for bringing the knowledge you create back into the main workflows, but the focus on phase one is to generate ideas and innovation. 
We'll have a look at the innovation toolkit later in this session, and we've also got a, a solution session planned to dig into even more detail later this week. So with that in mind, my colleagues and I would like to show you some examples of how we're taking this strategy and putting it into action to deliver new functionality. We'll do this by following a newly diagnosed diabetic patient along their journey. Long before COVID, diabetes was described as the biggest epidemic of the 21st century. It's one of the few chronic non-communicable diseases known to be increasing across all countries, irrespective of their level of economic development. We know that one in 11 adults are currently diabetic and that one in two diabetics remains undiagnosed globally. 10% of all current healthcare expenditure is spent on managing diabetic complications. And we know that early diagnosis leads to fewer complications in the long run, which is good for the patients and their families, but it's also good for healthcare providers because early diagnosis lowers the cost and complexity. In between today's presenters, I'll interrupt here and there to tell you a little bit more about what you're seeing and to highlight some of the key changes we've made. <clears throat> and keep in mind that everything you're seeing today is available now in the latest track care release. If you're a track care client and you're running any version that runs on Iris 2020 or higher, all of this functionality is available if you patch up to date thanks to our continuous release process. TrackCare is a, fully, a truly global product, and I'm really proud of both our geographic spread and our clinical depth within the product teams. One of the things we've tried to do in this session is highlight this breadth and depth, so you'll be hearing from colleagues from around the world who come from a wide variety of clinical and technical backgrounds. I really believe this diversity gives us a unique perspective on solving problems. Okay, so now I'm gonna pass over to Dr. Hazem el Orabi, our Chief Clinical Information Officer. Today, Dr. Hazem is going to represent a diabetes coordinator at our hospital. Welcome, Dr. Hazem. Hi, today I'm going to be your diabetes coordinator. In my role, I need to see lots of patients, inpatients, outpatients, emergency patients, and even patients that have already been discharged from the hospital. And to do that, I need to create some patient lists to help me uh, uh, manage the, those patients. Now, track care helps me to build those dynamic patient lists based on my own uh, preferences. And today we're gonna be looking at this list here, which allows me to see the patients that have been discharged within the last 60 days and have a high random blood sugar. And this is something that we commonly see in the emergency department. Patients come for whatever other condition, they get treated, they get discharged, and nobody has really managed them for the high uh, random blood sugar. So uh, that's my role now to make sure that they're getting the proper follow-up. So I've been just checking Abdul Karim's uh, record and he's already been seen by an endocrinologist. So I'll remove him from my list. And let's, uh, pick, uh, let's pick Mr. Ferrari here to check his record. Now, when I come to Mr. Ferrari's record, I can see he's got chest pain, hypertension, other, other problems, nothing about diabetes here, oh, except he's got some family history of uh, diabetes. And let's check the blood sugar. Yeah, here we go. This is the blood sugar that is high, that, and that's why Mr. Uh, Ferrari is on my list. So he looks like a good candidate for a screening. Let me create my note. And from here, I'll send him an invite to come to the diabetes clinic. It's as simple as adding a new order. And when I come back to my uh, note, I can see the uh, order has already been added to my note. Let me just add some context here so that anybody looking at my note would know why I've placed this order. So I'll add the random blood sugar, the result. And I know that he's got some family history as well. And while I'm at it, let me check the patient's weight. Oh yeah, this patient is definitely obese. So let me add this to my note as well. OK, so that's it for my note. I'll just uh, lock my note for now. And I'll go back to my patient list. Now, if I go back to the patient list, I'll notice that Mr. Rari has already dis disappeared from the list because he already has the invite and my list is, um, uh, has this condition where it doesn't show the patients that have the invites. But I also noticed that I've got a notification and it just says that an invite has already been sent to Mr. Fred Rari. So I'll acknowledge this notification, and now I'll leave you with Mr. Fred to see how he will act on the email he just got from me. Thank you. This is Roberto Magiteri. I've been working with Truck Care and InterSystems for over 20 years. I'm in charge of the Truck Care product team in the USA. Today I'll be Fred, 
the patient of our journey. Logging on my phone, I have received an email with a doctor notification to book uh, a diabetic screening. From within the email, I can access directly to the personal community module of track care. So I will log on using my credentials and I will see if I have a, already any scheduled appointment. In this case, I don't, and so I will go and book for the appointment as indicated by the physician. So I will look for the availab availability of, of, of my diabetic uh, screening in the specialty in the clinic and a date at my convenience. I will pick a date and I will pick the time uh, convenient for me. With a few clicks, I confirm the, the booking. At the same time, I will receive on my email the notification of the confirmation of this appointment. And from directly from the email, I can access to the Apple tag to then download on my laptop, my Apple wallet. Hi, my name is Gareth Esmond. I'm the track care product manager for PAS and revenue cycle management. I have 20 years experience in hospital operations. Before my current position, I worked at both MediClinic South Africa and MediClinic Middle East, where I was a director of revenue cycle management for the group. Today, I am representing an outpatient supervisor at our hospital. So I'll log in as an outpatient supervisor. And we'll be looking at the endocrinology departments for both Dr. Arus and Dr. Abdo. As we can see, when I, when I sign on to Dr. Abdo, they got a morning and an afternoon shift. Dr. Abdo is extremely busy. Um, we can see the patients that are departed booked, which are teleconsultations which patients are overbooked. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at our, our analytics dashboard for the, for the departments. And as you can see, you can see all departments. We're, we're going to drill down on the endocrinology department. Um, we can see Dr. Abdul is at 107%, where Dr. Arus is only at 14% utilization. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our, our patients for Dr. Abdul. We're going to transfer the teleconsultations that haven't been seen yet to Dr. Arus as a bulk transfer. So we go to our endocrinology speciality. We choose our doctor, which is Dr. Abdu. And um, for today's date, we find all our patients. We have a review of the teleconsultations. So we're going to select our patients. We want to do the automatic bulk transfer, which is Ruman, Ferrari, and Bliss. Um, and then we're going to go to the automatic bulk transfer option we have, where we'll choose Dr. Arus, and then today's date, we'll go find the slots, and then we'll update it, and we'll automatically transfer those patients from Dr. Abdu through to Dr. Arus's schedule, which will alleviate Dr. Abdu as well. And there we go, it's all completed. Thank you. Okay, so let's pause there for a minute and talk about what we just saw. There's a couple of things that I'd like to highlight. First, let's talk about patient experience. We're hearing from our clients that patient experience is becoming increasingly important to them. This is reflected in increased activity in our market around our track care personal community patient portal, but patient experience goes beyond the patient portal and our clients are looking for ways to make the patient journey seamless, coordinated, and comprehensive. We've heard this feedback, so we're going to be increasing our investment in this area in the coming year. And I'm very pleased to announce today that we have strengthened our track care product management team by adding a new product manager for patient experience to really pull together all the threads that touch patients and make sure our offerings are world leading in terms of how they support the experience. This role will cover the personal community product, but also our roadmap for virtual care and telehealth and all the other ways in which we interact directly with patients. So you saw here the start of this investment, an online mobile-friendly booking platform that's simple and easy to use, and the integration with Apple and Google phone wallet cards. This is smooth and seamless, easy to use and familiar. There's more to come in this area, but we're really proud of what we can do right now, and we're looking forward to seeing how this will benefit our clients. The other thing to highlight is the use of TrackCare's dynamic patient list functionality to identify a cohort of patients. This is a hugely powerful framework. It's built around our visual rules and anything you can define as a rule can be automatically converted to a list. We're seeing more and more use cases for this functionality around identifying and managing patients in new and different ways. 
So when we use the word analytics, people often think immediately of dashboards. And it's true that dashboards are an important uh, piece of analytics, but it's also worth highlighting that dynamic patient lists are also analytics, but embedded fully in the workflow as a native part of track care. Finally, we used the data to derive some real operational value. The outpatient administrator was able to see at a glance that the, that the clinic our patient Fred was scheduled to attend is oversubscribed and transition the appointment seamlessly to a different clinic. The value in a true EMR platform goes beyond direct clinical functionality. There's a lot you can do to streamline operations and maximize revenue, as well as improve the patient experience. So let's go back to Fred's journey. Next, you're going to meet an endocrinologist and a pharmacist. There's an unexpected trip to emergency where you meet an emergency doctor and a nurse, and then we'll see a quick telehealth follow-up visit. Keep in mind how we're managing the patient in a comprehensive way and sharing information across all the different care settings and departments. And I'll be back to call out some of the uh, parts of this that are new in track care. I'm gonna hand over now to Dr. Emmeline Ramos, one of our physician executives on the product team in Australia. Welcome, Dr. Emmeline. Hi, I'm Dr. Emmeline Ramos, and I'm a physician executive based in Australia. I've been working on track care for the last six years, and I'm a surgeon by training. Today, I'll be playing the role of an endocrinologist who will see Fred in the outpatient clinic. You can see that I'm reviewing Fred's notes using an encounter record, which gives me a consolidated view of all the information that we have on his medical record. I use the patient summary to give me a single page view of his general health. I'll then use the filters in the encounter record to hone in on his diabetes history. Now, track here allows the user to set up a series of personalized search filters. And this allows me to quickly find clinical notes written by everyone in the diabetes team. I can see that our diabetes coordinator recorded that Fred has a positive family history of diabetes. He's a little bit overweight and that he's been sent for a glucose tolerance test. Now, unfortunately, his results indicate that he does have type 2 diabetes. I'll add this result to his notes and I'll discuss with Fred about starting him off on a diabetes care plan using our clinical pathway functionality. Tracker's clinical pathway functionality enables you to provide comprehensive care that is based on best practice and is tailored according to your local guidelines. You can see that we can easily search for and start our patient on a care plan that incorporates the pillars of diabetes management. That is the treatment of hyperglycemia, patient education and support, as well as screening and prevention of complications. A clinical pathway ensures shared understanding of what care needs to be provided and when, and reduces detrimental variation in care across the patient population. We'll start Fred on some diabetes medication today by actioning an order set on the pathway. Now this order set incorporates local guidelines on what would be suitable first and second line treatment for someone with Fred's risk profile. We'll prescribe them some metformin. Now, of course, guidelines are only that. They provide a set of best practice interventions for your patient. Tracker's clinical pathway functionality gives you the option to personalize care according to the needs of your patient. And luckily, Fred tells me today that he is a lifelong non-smoker. So I'll just go ahead and remove a referral for a smoking cessation from his pathway. Hi, I'm Tianzhu, the Clinical Solutions Executive from InterSystems China. I've been working with TrackCare for five years, and I'm a cardiologist by training. Today, I'm going to play the role of an ED doctor. Our patient, Fred, was admitted to the emergency room due to feeling faint and dizzy. I'm told that the triage has been done, and his blood glucose is 3.8 millimole per liter, which is much lower than the normal range. In order to have a comprehensive view of Fred's medical history, I need to go through his EPR. I can easily see that Fred has been diagnosed with diabetes and has been enrolled in a clinical pathway. He is currently taking metformin. Furthermore, I can see the detailed medical records from both the diabetes coordinator and the endocrinologist. Usually, diabetes patients are at high risk during ED visits so easy access to the continuous medical records is essential for ED doctors. Well, based on Fred's symptoms, blood sugar result, and diabetes history, it's clear that he is encountering hypoglycemia. Before placing the orders, I need to check the to-do list to see if I need to follow anything from the clinical pathway. 
I see that the pathway suggests an influenza vaccination. I can order it directly from the pathway. The action button will bring me to the order page. And of course, on the same page, I can also place the glucose injection and the glucose monitoring. I'm going to use the order favorite icon to access my frequently used orders. And both the glucose injection and the glucose monitoring are there. After I enter my password and click submit orders, I'm done with my orders. And all, all of them have been recorded in FRAX medical records. Hi, I'm Erin Clack, and I'm a clinical application lead from Australia. I've been working with Track Care for a bit over five years, and I'm a pharmacist by training. Today, I'll be working as an ED pharmacist, reviewing Fred's current medications and performing a medication reconciliation. Medication reconciliation is the formal process of documenting an accurate list of a patient's current medications and matching to them to what's been prescribed in hospital. Studies have shown that around half of medication errors that occur in hospital happen at admission or on discharge. Out of these errors, about 30% of them have the potential to cause patient harm. An average type 2 diabetic patient will be on around eight medications, so it's really important that we document Fred's medications accurately. To start the medication reconciliation process, I'm going to capture a best possible medication history for Fred. One of the pillars of a best possible medication history is ensuring that your information comes from a number of different sources. Using Track Care, I can import medications from a national database using FIAM. And you can see I've already pulled in these medications for Fred from the national database. You can see that it's included the external prescriber and dispensing details. And after talking to Fred, I can capture additional information, such as how long he's been on the medication and how he rates his compliance. In addition to pulling information from a national database using FHIR, I can collect medication history items from Fred's previous medication histories, current orders, as well as orders prescribed in previous outpatient visits. You'll see here I'm going to pull in the medication prescribed by Dr. Emmeline in the outpatient clinic. When I'm happy with my best possible medication history, I'll hit update to save it. Once I've completed Fred's medication history, it's time to move on to the admission reconciliation. Track Care provides two types of reconciliation. Medication planning, which is used by doctors to prescribe medications from the medication history, and medication reconciliation, which is used by pharmacists to accurately document discrepancies and intentional changes. So let's start with the admission planning. The admission plan allows the prescriber to convert Fred's medication history items into hospital medication orders. We're going to continue these two home medications in hospital. And you'll see by selecting continue, it creates planned medication orders for these items. For the third item, the prescriber would like to withhold the medication until Fred is discharged from hospital. By selecting the withhold option, you'll see that the prescriber is able to indicate why they'd like to withhold the medication which is then saved against Fred's record. Selecting update and commit will take those planned medication orders into the order car, allowing them to be prescribed for Fred. As this uses the standard track care orders workflow, a prescriber can then add radiology, laboratory, or any other orders they'd like while they're here. The second piece of medication reconciliation functionality that track care provides is for admission reconciliation. This functionality is used by pharmacists to accurately document what's going on with Fred's medications. You'll see here by selecting home medications, it allows me to use the reconcile link to match the medications Fred's been prescribed in hospital and document any discrepancies or decisions. You can see here that the medication that was withheld by the prescriber during planning is included here, and I can review the comments that the prescriber made meaning that as a pharmacist, I have a clear view of what the intention was. Once I've completed my medication reconciliation, I can view any issues that I still need to chase up with the prescriber and document these here. The medication reconciliation process is available on admission, as we just saw, as well as on transfer and on discharge. When Fred is eventually transferred or discharged, the reconciliation workflows ensure continuity of care by allowing clinicians to view a clear picture of Fred's medication journey and communicate any changes with his clinicians in the community. Hi, my name is Janet Seaton. I'm a product manager from the UK. I've been working on track here for nine years now, mostly in the Middle East, and I'm a nurse by training. Today, I'm playing the role of the ED nurse. 
I'm taking care of Fred. And I've just come on shift and I've opened my encounter record. From my encounter record, I can quickly check Fred's history. And then open a new encounter record to document my assessments. I want to review Fred's observations and medications using the clinical timeline. The clinical timeline is a time based display where clinicians can see data plotted on charts such as observations alongside medications or other tasks. As you can see, I can access the clinical timeline from within the encounter record itself. The encounter entry that I am using is linked by default to the standard vital signs and meds timeline, but Fred is a diabetic patient, so I can swap to the timeline that also shows blood glucose monitoring. If I worked in a different area such as labour and delivery, I would have access to a different set of clinical timelines, including a partogram with displays of the stages of labour. Or if I worked in paediatrics growth charts, as I navigate across the scroll bar at the top of the screen, the data is zooming in and out. And I can also use the minus and the plus keys to zoom even closer into data. If Fred had had previous admissions with data, I would see that also. However, for now, it shows me immediately the information that's relevant for me by, by selecting the reset to default. I'm now going to add blood glucose monitoring for Fred. When I add this data, it's automatically added to Fred's timeline. However, it's also added to the encounter entry as well. I can do this without leaving the clinical timeline. I can see Fred's medications on the administration timeline, including the dextrose infusion, which has already been started. From here, I can also administer the flu jab. I select the icon. I open the little administration screen from the popover. I check that the details are all correct and that I am happy. Obviously, I've speeded this up. And then I add my password and I update. And this will automatically mark on the administration timeline that it has been administered at that date and time. While I'm in the clinical timeline, I can review the to-do list to see if there's anything outstanding that I still need to do. Effectively, for now, this is the end of Fred's emergency visit. He actually recovers well and is discharged once his blood sugar stabilise. However, the diabetic team have been in contact with him. Thank you. Patient Fred is back. From the patient portal, I can link any wearable or personal health devices directly into track here. In order to do so, I just click connect to activate the link. I will access to the app of the third party vendor where I will log on with my credentials and define the individual parameters I want to be automatically linked with TrackCare. TrackCare supports many vendors and devices. In this case, I have linked my iHealth one. Following my doctor's recommendations, I have been monitoring the blood glucose over a period of time. Logging on my phone, I can see the parameters being collected by the device, which will be then sent to TrackCare to be reviewed by the physician. Hello, I'm Dr. Rami Riman. I'm a medical oncologist by profession. I joined InterSystem six years ago, and I currently work as the clinician executive lead in the EMEA region. Today, I'm one of the doctors in the diabetic clinic. As you can see on my screen, I can see my schedule, including my specialist consultations, follow-up consultations, as well as the teleconsultations, all consolidated within my same record. I can see that Fred has been on the call for the last 12 minutes, and I don't want to keep him waiting too long. I will simply join the call using the special link into the Microsoft Teams link that was sent to the patient, and I will initiate this call to start documenting our chat. How are you doing? Morning, doctor. I think I'm doing okay, thank you. Great, great. I can see that you've uh, you've had an ER visit uh, recently and you've been uh, placed on some new medication for your uh, diabetes. Uh, can you tell me how you're feeling? I'm generally, I think I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. 
Great, great. I can see you've been placed on the glucophage since one week ago. This is the metformin. Uh, are you having any uh, night sweats? No. Uh, are you waking up more in the night to go to the toilet to pass on urine? No, same as earlier. I mean, uh, I still wake up sometimes, but not in particular, I would say. That's great. And uh, do you have any, uh, have you have you had any new symptoms? Are you becoming more thirsty usually during the day? Well, maybe this, a little bit, I would say. Not significant, but a little bit, yes. Okay, okay. Otherwise, are you are you complaining of any new symptoms or anything unusual that you're feeling? No, I'm not. And I follow your suggestion. I recorded my glucose values and I sent it over the, the portal. That's that's exactly where I'm looking at. I got a notification that you had the results. So I can see uh, your blood results over the last couple of days. And I can see they've been fluctuating, but within the range of 200 and 120. So that's, that's relatively uh, okay for now. What I would recommend is that uh, if you can schedule uh, another call within three months, uh, hopefully within the hospital so that we can arrange for some new blood tests. And for the time being, I would recommend that you continue on the same uh, treatment. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm going to be following your suggestion. Great. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye. Now, as you can see, I could see the results from Mr. Fred Ferrari separate from the normal chart. I would like to highlight a couple of the uh, values that were entered by Mr. Ferrari into my note. And I would like to conclude my uh, note in here by saying that uh, Mr. Ferrari will come to the clinic uh, in three months. And that will conclude our visit for today. Okay. So there's quite a bit that just happened and a lot to catch up on. What you've seen is a tightly integrated care solution that puts a real focus on the patient in line with what I spoke about earlier in terms of our focus on patient experience. The doctors were using TrackCare's Encounter Record Clinical Documentation Tool and also the Clinical Pathways Care Planning Extension. This creates a comprehensive system for care planning and documentation that results in better care, increased safety, and a rich patient record ready for secondary uses. I hope you can see in, from these tools how our focus on user experience continues to drive product direction. These tools were developed in close collaboration with our user experience teams and also our client stakeholders. We're working closer than ever with our customers and our continuous release process makes it easier for us to share prototypes for evaluation and get real user feedback prior to formal release. The new clinical timeline view that you saw Janet demonstrate is a great example of this. You saw a graphical view of observations, medications, and other data all lined up, easy to navigate, mobile-friendly, and intuitive. This is a big step forward for track care, and I think really demonstrates our commitment to driving user experience. There was another big ticket item in this session, and that's track care's new medication reconciliation functionality. When the patient arrived, you saw Aaron pull in the patient's medication list from an external source using Fire and evaluate and plan based on that list. TrackCare makes this easy to manage, and we think the UI is very clear. There's a lot of evidence around the benefits of strong medica medication reconciliation tools and processes, which support the level of effort we put into this. And, and TrackCare now supports reconciliation at admission, transfer, and discharge, giving us a full and comprehensive solution. And the use of FHIR to pull in the medication list is an example of our strong commitment and investment in FHIR as the future of interoperability. FHIR gives us the tools we need to manage this sort of complex integration in a standards-based, safe, and structured way. Around the world, many countries are deploying FHIR-based prescription sharing services, and we're ready to integrate with these systems as soon as they're deployed. So finally, let's talk about patient-entered data. You saw that Dr. Rami was able to view observations collected on a patient wearable within the track care record right alongside the other observations. This is another example where you'll see our investment in patient experience start to pay dividends. Wearable devices and home monitoring devices can be an incredibly valuable source of information if they're used properly. The data needs to be handled a little bit differently from in-hospital devices, and of course, there's security and privacy considerations. But when it's properly implemented, it can give you a more complete view of the patient, particularly in outpatient specialty settings, but also in other areas. 
Okay, so now that our clinical journey has completed, let's take a look at some of the ways in which you can innovate and get value out of the data you collected. I mentioned earlier that our new Track Care Innovation Toolkit is a 20 minute solution session that's part of the summit that goes into a fair bit of detail on this. I'd recommend watching that if you're interested. But for now, let's visit with a developer who works in the hospital in their technology and data department, and let's hear how he's using the new toolkit in order to innovate. I'd like to introduce you to Eslam Farhat, our product manager for interoperability. Hello, everyone. My name is Eslam Farhat. I'm the product manager for interoperability. Uh, I joined InterSystem nine years ago, and today I'll be showing you a quick demo on the Innovation Toolkit. Uh, the Innovation Toolkit is a toolkit. You can use it to connect to your patient data through Fire, and will give you the ability to access uh, track care patient data and connect it to your application like machine learning, uh, like chatbots, or even do it in your research, or even build your own smartphone for applications that you can plug it in track care. Uh, we will have a dedicated session to show you step by step how to install the innovation toolkit and how to use it. Uh, for that, please join us in the other session, which we will cover everything in detail. Today, we will just showing you a quick demo for some of the feature coming with the innovation toolkit. So the first one to show it to you today is a smart on fire app. So as a part of the innovation toolkit, we're already embedding a smart on fire app, which is a uh, post on uh, growth chart. This is a famous app in Smart on Fire. So here I just have already an endpoint, which is uh, five days U2 through OS2 server. And I have my smart app and I have already a patient URN, which I will be using it to launch the smart app. To launch the smart app, you just need to click on this button to generate the link. And just to open the application, you just simply click that link, which would just open the external Smart on Fire app. So this app is not something built by InterSystem, it's an external app, and it's just showing the growth chart. So as you can see on the screen now, the app have connected to track here through the innovation kit, and I can see all my growth chart, like the weight and height and the BMI, and I can see it in a chart, and I can actually also see it in a tabular data, and this is exactly the observation I already have it for that patient in track here. This was just a quick overview for the smart on fire, the next feature is that I will be going to show you how to search and read patient data. To search for a patient or read patient data, we have another tool called Fire Test Utility. So I would click on Fire Test Utility, and to do a search, I can click on patient search, put the patient details, and do a search. Other option is just to do a patient read, which is basically will retrieve the patient medical record uh, as a Fire bundle. That can be in a JSON format, and it can be an XML, and you can decide which information you would like to have in the bundle. Is it the patient demographics or everything? And today, I will be showing you this medical record fire bundle for the same patient we're using today. So I will just put in the URN for uh, Freddy Ferrer, and uh, I will just do a search. I click on search fire. So basically, that will go and retrieve all the patient demographics from the fire server. I would like to see all the clinical data. I have the option to say everything, and then I can do another search. If you would like to trace and see really all the details and how being done, you can click on something called Fire Visual Trace, which it will give you visual trace how the information has been featured from track here and returned back to the fire server and then back to the external system. If you would like to use the same with an external application like Postman, you can easily click and export request to Bossman, which will export the file and download it in the browser. Then you just need to go to Bossman, go to file, and just import. Select the same file have been just exported now, which is this file. Now it will show me the same. This is R4 patient treat. I click on import. I will select the same request now showing to me. And you can see it just showing the same URN. I was using it to read the information from the innovation toolkit. I just need to put the username and password. So I will just use for now basic authentication. I just put in my password and just I click to send the request. This will take a few seconds and will return to me the same fire bundle for the patient with all the information like the appointment, medication, and observation. If I like to use exactly the same with different programming language, you can just in Postman, you have an option called code snippet that I can just go and select any language as example C sharp and then it will give me how 
I can just write the same in C sharp with the example URL and authentication. I can use other tools for common, like for example, like Python, and it will give me the code with all authentication. I just need to take this one, put it in my tool, and getting the patient data, and then building your own apps. This was just like a quick overview for the innovation toolkit. Please join us in the other session to know everything. Thank you. So with the Track Air Innovation Toolkit, what we're doing is removing as many of the barriers as we can to allow you to start working with your data. FIRE is an international standard, doesn't rely on any internal knowledge of Track Air's data structures, and the IRIS Community Edition container is up and running in minutes. So the cost of entry to start working with FIRE is very low. We're using this model with some of our internship programs and our own internal innovation exercises, and I'd love to see some of our clients do the same. Whether that's by building smart on fire apps to visualize your data in a unique way, connecting to a machine learning system, or acting as a data repository for chatbots and similar apps, you can get started quickly and spend your time innovating rather than building infrastructure or extracting data. So one final announcement to share is we've just launched our InterSystems client community for TrackCare users. This is an online community where we can share documentation, videos, and ideas, and also host discussion communities where you can engage with your colleagues and fellow track care clients, as well as the global and regional track care teams. Today, we're announcing it as open to all clients, and I invite you to log in and have a look around. It uses the same credentials as iService and CCR, so many of you will already have an account. But if you don't, there's an easy workflow to create one. And this brings us to the end of our time together today. It's been a thrill to show you some of what we've been working on in the last year. Just to circle back to where we started, we're in an era of unprecedented change, and our goal with TrackAir is to be your platform to run an agile healthcare organization, to deliver outstanding patient care, and to deliver value from the data that you've collected in the process. Everything you've seen today is available in the current release of TrackCare. And with our continuous release process, as long as you're running InterSystems Iris 2020 or later as your data platform, you can have access to this functionality by simply patching up to date. We've really only scratched the surface in this session. I invite you to explore uh, the track care solution sessions we've got planned for this week to get a deeper view on some of the new functionality and process improvements. Log on to the client community and explore our library of short videos and our online documentation and get in touch with us. The punctuation event we find ourselves in right now brings challenges, but it also brings tremendous opportunity. And we hope that Track Care is a key platform for you to navigate in this environment. So thank you for your time today, and thank you for your trust in InterSystems.